afternoon, everybody. The Lawn Gnome is here, and welcome to your August 2015 episode of Out of the Vault. As always, I'm just getting redundant here, but if you need to catch up and see which classics I've already reviewed, please take a look at the playlist provided in the box below. So today we're going to talk about a very interesting Disney classic, number 25 from 1985, the dark fantasy story, The Black Cauldron. This was a very interesting time, and I've been talking about this period of Disney classics a lot in some of my recent videos in the past two years. The 1980s was a crazy time for Disney because of the fact that they almost went bankrupt. But not just that, it was also because of the fact that starting in in the 1970s, animation was changing and going in very different directions. Suddenly, there were directors like Ralph Bakshi, who suddenly realized that we don't need to have animated films strictly just for children. In the 1970s, we got the very first X-rated animated film, Fritz the Cat, and we also had movies like The Hobbit, Fire and Ice, and of course, the cult classic Heavy Metal. One way or another, animation was still being geared towards children, but but at the same time, it was being geared towards adults, too. But something interesting happened in the early 1980s when one of Disney's animators and storytellers, Don Bluth, left and started his own family animation company, and he was working for Universal. He had already, in 1982, made a very well-known classic, and it was a year before an American tale hit theaters when The Black Cauldron came out. Disney was struggling, and Disney was taking a look at the world around it and said, I think we may need to take this direction. They already had The Fox and the Hound that came out in 1981, and that movie does have mixed reviews. But The Black Cauldron, especially when I was very young, I saw the trailer for it when I had Pinocchio on VHS, which was one of my all-time favorite Disney classics classics. This movie looked crazy good. This looked like something I never would have imagined from a Disney film. And even though I still was very young and hadn't seen that many Disney classics, it just didn't come off as a Disney film to me. Disney was Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Pluto, and these guys. I never would have imagined seeing something like The Black Cauldron, but I never got to see it. It left theaters. I did not end up seeing this movie until I was like 17 years old, and I just remember not enjoying this movie at all and being a massive disappointment, but now I saw it again. And lo and behold, I think I hate it even more now. This may be one of the worst Disney films that I have ever seen, and it makes me so mad because of all of the promise that this movie shows through its trailers and what it possibly could be. Disney taking a dark tone. Disney showing true fantasy. Disney showing one of the scariest Disney villains of all time. And yet, there's no character development. The characters are not even relatable, and the villain just sits on his throne and broods. He also has one of the worst Disney villain deaths I have ever seen. Now, granted, I feel the worst Disney death, as far as a villain is concerned, goes to Sean Yu from Mulan. This movie had so much promise and had none of the accolades to back it up. And don't even get me started on how annoying Gurgi was. Gurgi makes Dobby look like Sir Lawrence Olivier. That's how bad this character is. It's even got a Disney princess in Princess Alanwe, I think that's how you pronounce her name. That was another major problem with this movie. The names were so weird. I mean, I know it's based on a novel, but it's very, very hard to have kids sit down in a movie like this and have them try and remember some of these character names. This movie really does go by the wayside, especially when you take a look at the complete Disney Classics library. More people can recognize the three Caballeros more than they can characters from The Black Cauldron. And even the voice of John Hurt as the Horned King, who is the villain, I mean, like, I love John Hurt. But this villain is terrible. However, I can't deny the fact that I have to give Disney admiration for actually trying to take this tone and try to make a dark film. Now, granted, after that movie, we had The Great Mouse Detective, which was also a very dark film, but that one actually worked very well. But this one just doesn't hit the mark in any way, shape, or form. 
I would say that if you've never seen The Black Cauldron, just don't. If you want to be one of those people like me who is attempting to watch every Disney classic, then yes, see it, but I guarantee you, you will have the exact same reactions as I do. I'm giving The Black Cauldron one and a half out of four, and the reason why I'm giving it one and a half is because I'm giving Disney props for trying to go outside of the box and give Disney classic moviegoers something that they never have seen before. And based on how it ended up, it lost to the Care Bears movie, and we'll never see something like that again from a Disney classic. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I'm looking forward to another episode of Out of the Vault in September, and I will see you then. Actions speak louder than words.